um, after you know flying helicopters and you know that type of thing. And I don't know. Maybe I can teach you how to fix vibration problems. Are you with me? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of case histories that I've kind of worked on over uh, over my career. And I think case histories are a good learning tool. You kind of see the approach, and, and it gives you kind of like we, we came, we saw, we conquered, and, you know, that type of thing. So we're going to be doing a number of case histories uh, this morning that are just titled How to Fix Vibration Problems. And generally, we're looking for something not to put a Band-Aid on it, but to do root cause failure analysis type of fix. All right, fix the problem so hopefully it won't uh, occur again. <clears throat> Another quick case history, air compressor motor uh, damage, all right, resulted from poor laser alignment. If we look at it, it's a, it's a large three-stage air compressor directly coupled to a two-pole motor mounted on a skid and this unit had been relocated to a new building. Right, it had been in service for, for quite a period of time. They, when they relocated, they had a, the company that did the re relocation throw a laser alignment on it, and they checked the alignment and said the alignment is good. Okay, and in order to relocate this, they had to pull the motor off the skid. They couldn't pick the whole thing up in one piece. So they had to go in and do the alignment. All right, we picked up vibration increase. This was in the old building. Now in the new building, the vibration is up there when we first took our reading. It said something has changed. You know, something's not good. It's still not up to extremely high, you know, amplitude levels, but something has, has changed here that, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't be. We pulled a, a sample of oil and looked at it underneath the microscope. And this is the, the oil and the, the, all of these little particles you see are Babbitt, all right, uh, coming from the, from the motor, uh, motor bearing, all right. Uh, large quantity, very small ferrous uh, wear particles. We look at the, the bearing in the motor, and the motor, it's a sleeve bearing motor. It doesn't have a thrust bearing. The motor is supposed to run on its magnetic center. All right, the, the, the magnetic field will center the rotor. All right, <clears throat> it has, does have a thrust face on the radial bearing so that when you cut the power off, there's something for, to maintain the rotor from shifting back and forth too far because you no longer have any magnetic center. You don't have any power, you know, in the motor. So they have a thrust face, but it's not meant to take any load. It's just meant to be used during coast down. All right, and we had damage to that thrust face. That's where the uh, Babbitt was coming from, was on the thrust, uh, thr thrust face. We went in to do a hot alignment check, and one of the things that you have to do, and, and a lot of you may, not, may do alignment, but may not be that familiar with sleeve bearing motor alignment, is when you do the alignment, you're supposed to set the motor on its magnetic center, all right, by just shifting with a, with a probar or whatever you need to get that motor on its mag center, all right, and then you set the end spacing between either the coupling faces or the shaft, all right, and they didn't do that when they did this alignment, and when they aligned it, the motor was shoved all the way up against that thrust face. Uh, when they did the alignment. Now, any vibration just causes it to sit there and chatter up against that face because the motor wants to go to mag center and it can't. So it tries to move over and it hits the face and then bounces back and then hits it again and bounces back. The motor is always trying to get to mag center and it was being held off mag center uh, by not setting, uh, setting that. And we also found that there was a lot of soft foot which is not untypical of these skid-mounted machines, particularly when you pick them up and move them. All right, and that there was soft foot. So we soft foot was shimmed, axial float was corrected, so that we set the axial spacing with the motor on mag center, and the bearing was repaired. Um, we could pull the pull the bearing out, send it to the shop, repair it, not have to pull the motor, which is 
you know, a lot of rigging and everything else to do. All right, and uh, everything was repaired. 